Apollo Ballers. What's going on? It's Preacher. And it's the Death Knight. Oh, God. Have we got some good blurbs to look forward to? Because you know they're going to be cheesy as fuck. We have the previews of what the DK is going to look like. So let me preface this in the usual way. This is the foundation design of where they're going with it in Legion. Totally subject to change. And it's missing out on all the talent trees and the artifact stuff. Which means that there's probably way more stuff to come. In terms of how this thing will play out. But this is the basics of what you're going to be doing. On top of that, the DK has lots and lots of signature spells. Which are, in fact, missing at this point. That does not mean those spells do not exist. Everything from, like, Vampiric Blood, Dancing Rune Weapons, Soul Reaper, and so on and so forth are all not mentioned in the preview. That does not mean those spells do not exist. The only one I will actually bring up, and you'll see why shortly, is Blood Boil, which is not mentioned at all, but maybe, hopefully, it might still exist. So, without further ado, let us begin with Blood in Undeath. Some Death Knights find a special affinity for the blood and bone of the living. They carve into their enemies, sustaining themselves with deathly, sanguine strikes, while using the bloody, shattered remains of the dead to fortify their own defences. These crimson-soaked knights bend the very rules of mortality to control the front lines of the battlefield. Ooh, you know it was going to be good when it was blood, right? Blood DK, we can go ham on this motherfucker. Right, so this has had significant changes basically to bring interest back to the blood DK because it's been so absurd throughout WAD and ultimately ended in a real spammy, non-thinking mess. Of basically, if you can save for a death strike, you're fine. The rest of that, you can just blow it away and save up for just one particular moment in the fight. Other than that, it was kind of dog shit. And people were reasonably tempted, and I was impressed actually, were tempted to see exactly how far they could push their uh, blood DK by timing things perfectly with trinket procs and all that. Not that it made it any different from a healer's perspective, but in terms of their uptimes and DPS, it certainly made a difference. So, where are the big changes coming from? Essentially, one of the biggest changes is that death strike now costs runic power and not runes so on top of that we need to mention that runes are all the same now there's no such thing as frost runes death runes and unholy runes they didn't like that anymore uh rune management had kind of gone out of the window a little bit not not all the way but it certainly wasn't the way it was intended to be played back in the day so what they've done now is just said okay we'll just make all the runes the same and now you have choices on where to spend runes the whole th the whole seems to design philosophy around the dk right now is choice 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 so death strike now costs 40 runic which means obviously rune strikes gone or death coil should i say has gone and it does the usual blood field effect nothing different going on there besides the fact that when you go below 35 percent health it will consume all your runic power for a mega shield it will scale it up to a mega shield instead of being limited to the 40 runic power cost normally now this is pretty cool in itself there were already plenty of dks who were toying around with purgatory as defensive cooldown so i will be interested to see exactly how are the uh how some of the more experienced DKs in their raids will try and play around with that in order to achieve some mechanics. They are moving uh, Bone Shield into a different way as well. So it's not going to be just a cooldown that you pop your Bone Shield and you get your charges. You now have the ability to Blood Strike. Welcome back. One rune does damage and applies Blood Plague, which will heal you and get some runic power, right? This is your runic power generator. You can also do Marrow Rend. This is going to cost two runes. Okay, it does damage and it generates three bone shield charges. Ah, okay, so now you start to see where this is going. Because obviously this doesn't generate runic power, but instead it will give you charges of bone shield. Ah, oh, interesting. So there's going to be choices to be made here, which are far more interesting than there are today. A newbie newbie might be trying to get blood shields and bone shields all the time. Now, a good player isn't going to do that. They're going to be thinking, do I prefer to have a blood shield for this ability, for this attack that's incoming, or do I want to use bone shield charges? Let's say it's a fast attacking mob. In general, you don't want a blood shield for that. You'd actually prefer bone shield charges, which are being able to be spammed, or at least, well, three of them, because it costs two runes apiece, and getting nine bone shield charges while these things are hitting you very very quickly oh interesting interesting and then we can do some stuff with uh death strike along the other side of that aha i see i see i see uh they're also going to change the way you do aoe right now you generally just spam blood uh <laughs> blood boil sorry the, i'm about to say blood like 90 times so bear in mind that i'm gonna keep get messing this up so death and decay now costs one rune it's got usual cooldown 
and it does the usual death and decay stuff however everything stood within your death and decay when you blood strike something it will do damage to everything that's in the death and decay okay so it's all the mobs that are studying your death and decay which makes gothian grasp just even better uh when you blood strike something and it will hit everything inside the death and decay okay so that's kind of like how you're going to aoe and you also then get a passive called crimson scourge where your auto attacks on targets that have been infected by blood plague have a 25 percent chance to reset the cooldown on death and decay okay here's the issue which most experienced and especially tanks that have known have known to get geared and start doing some proper speed runs where's blood boil and the reason we ask is, I don't care if it's 25% or 50%, I don't want to have to wait for something that can snap aggro things as I'm running through a dungeon pretty quickly. And tanks are expected to do that on a more regular basis than ever before, and in fact top end tanks will be doing that all the time. Having only death and decay, and having to have the mobs inside it and blood strike it, is incredibly awkward. Very, very, very fucking awkward. Really awkward. So... I would like to know if blood boil still exists to counter this problem of people feeling tempted to auto I mean we're talking auto attacks here with a 2h not the fastest thing in the fucking universe to reset this thing and we just want to be able to run through and do appropriately timed blood boils just to snap the aggro then get into position with lots and lots of mobs and get into the death and decay scenario there. I think this is really important that we get this addressed because it's kind of a big deal. You should be able to do something as you move through a dungeon, right? Should be able to do something. Like a warrior, you might say, well, warriors can't do that. Their, their thunderclap has a, a short cool, has a cooldown attached to it. Yeah, but we can also cleave and shield slam and revenge, which hits multiple targets all the way through. We generally don't have a big deal with that. But even though we do have options, we're clearly not as good as somebody who can just spin in crane kick, right? Or consecrate and run around with consecrate following them everywhere. So there is plenty of good reasons why we would require a blood boil a type element to exist it really is quite important so i hope it still exists although they've not mentioned it the talent they showed why blizz why moonstorm wait for the macros oh sweet jesus although this thing sounds crazy overpowered it costs 15 runic a second it does very rapid aoe damage it hits three times per second and it does self healing of one percent of your maximum hp Per strike, that's nothing to do with based on damage, just as long as the things hit. You could be attacking something that takes 99% reduced damage. Doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't fucking matter. If you bone storm in the middle of it and start chucking, what do they call it? F bone and gore. You start whirling bone and gore at things, which apparently you're carrying in your satchel. Uh, three times per second, you start hitting multiple mobs with that. You're some it's so difficult to die. Honestly, it's so fucking difficult to die, but obviously at 15 runic per second, it doesn't last that long. But still, that is a pretty impressive fucking talent. One of the most interesting I've seen so far. I just absolutely wish it was not called Bone Storm. Absolutely, Gore Storm will do him better. If we could call it Gore Storm, I would have been more happy with that. So the game, get general gameplay style is going to come down to choice. A good, good Blood DK is going to be finding ways of just making appropriate choices with Bone Shield and Blood Shield. What's the most appropriate in this scenario? Do I want to stack them for a mega cooldown so I have a blood shield and a bone shield? Do I want bone shield in this scenario? Is that going to be more uh, preferable to me? Or do I want big blood shields? What am I going to do here? And good blood DKs will shine in the active mitigation world when they make those choices correctly. Okay, so that's generally the place that's going to go with. I haven't uh, wimped out on the general gameplay there, but that is basically what it comes down to with the active mitigation side of blood. So much more interesting than what it is now. Holy shit, I'm not saying it's amazing. I think there's a long way to go with blood because it still seems kind of fluffy to me. But in terms of where it is now, that's fine. And as long as we never go back to the scenario where we're spamming frost fever and fucking Syndragos' breath, I will be a happy little DK. Blood DK is one of the least played specs I've played over Worlds of Draenor because I was so bored every time I did it. So I know some of you guys love it and that's fine. I'm just saying from my perspective, I was a long time DK. The current iteration of it, I was so derpy boring. So derpy boring. So all thumbs up from me. All thumbs up from me. So having said that then, let's move over to Frost. Combining ma uh, martial prowess and supernatural cold, Frost Death Knights leave their enemies chilled to the bone and broken of the will to fight unlike mages who learn to harness frost magic to great effect these death knights are born of it rhyme gripping their decaying hearts 
These frozen undead warriors wield dual blades to strike with ferocity and inflict deathly cold upon anyone who would stand against them. Yeah, I'm sure many Frosty Ks feel that way, don't they? Because they're Howling Blast spam! Howling Blast! What have they done with the Frosty K? Relatively unchanged. You can see I've only really mentioned two things there and the things you need to know. As everything else pretty much remains kind of the same. Okay? It remains kind of the same. The big change really is they are forcing you, essentially. They're absolutely forcing you to play as intended. Now, Blizzard's bred a community, and I've marked it on several occasions, bred a community who absolutely goes way and above and beyond to try and not play as intended. And for good reason. Blizzard's made some poor choices with the balancing of attributes towards a lot of the DK spells. Obliterate does, like, physical damage, and it's a guaranteed crit when it's done with Killing Machine, which procs a hell of a lot. So, that really nullifies both mastery and critical strike chance for, uh, for Frost DKs, which is why they were moving heavily towards Frost Strike, which took advantage of those, or at least mastery, right? But the buffs they're giving, such as Howling Blast having 300% additional damage when done with Rhyme, and Killing Machine only working with Obliterate, kind of means that you will not, you will absolutely not be able to go backwards and forwards and try and find some way out of this. The math already seems to suggest that you won't be able to do that. You'll be locked, essentially, into playing as intended. Alright? As intended. This is one of the specs where I think the new rune system actually sucks. Because good frost AoE with proper rune management is really good, especially when you're forcing procs of frost runes and stuff. Gives a little bit more interest. Whereas now, if you find frost boring now, I kind of think you might find frost way more boring. This is basically the Cataclysm style. This is how I got my world first, was playing as intended in the Cataclysm, cataclysm style, right? That's when I did it. And yeah, it gets very dull very, very quickly because it doesn't really matter how much gear you get. You play exactly the same all the way through the expansion. So I kind of get it. You do get a new spell called Remorseless Winter, though. Uh, it costs one rune, 30 second cooldown, and radiate extreme cold, dealing moderate frost damage to all enemies with 10 yards over 10 seconds. So like an AoE just for things being stood near you. No mention of it slowing. Which is interesting. I would imagine Remorseless Winter would slow. And obviously it's comparable to the stun that we get now. But now it just does frost damage. Would it, does it do frost fever as well? I mean, it's not that we need it. But it would make sense, right? So overall, frost remains very, very unchanged. So there you go. That's how it's going to be. It's just basically pushing you back into playing as standard. Now, having said that, the talent they've given you, Glacial Advance, is very cool. Costs one rune, right? One rune, 12 second cooldown, and it spawns glacial spikes that move forward towards the target, doing frost damage for everything in between. So you're going to be lining this up, kind of like power shot for a hunter, getting the mobs like all in front of you, maybe in front of the boss or whatever, or leading towards the boss, and send your spikes like pulling through the ground. Will it knock them up in the air? Doesn't say. Doesn't say whether it knocks them up in the air, but I would be thankful to see them actually knock things in the air or impale them in some way. Something fun coming from that rather than it being a sort of earthquakey type spell. That would be uh, something I would hope to see in the near future or the new iterations of that, of that ability. So, let's finish up on Unholy. This has had dramatic changes and looks awesome! It looks so good because there's so much choices to go on here. But I've kind of... Uh, You'll see when we get to the general gameplay idea that maybe it's not as interesting as it seems, but it seems interesting. So I'm going to have to go over the new abilities you're getting, which is Outbreak. It's now one room with a six second cooldown, and it causes a target to infect all surrounding enemies with virulent plague, right? So it does minor damage on its own, but it then gives this like aura. That target is now going to emit plague onto everything around it. So then obviously it infects them with virulent plague, a dot. This dot erupts when the target dies and does AoE damage to everything. And it also has a chance to erupt on tick. Alright? Every time the dot ticks, it has a chance to erupt. So you have this constant, like... Almost like you are a walking radiation thing, right? A walking radiation out emitter. And you're just infecting and causing these pussy postules to pop out and erupt and spray mucus and goo and pus everywhere and make them all ill yeah gross so gross but so cool at the same time but you want to talk about gross festering strike two runes two runes this is going to cost you it does massive physical damage whatever that means but it also infects the target with one to three seems like it's a chance right festering wounds 
Ugh. You can feel, feel, always feel the maggots crawling around in it. So what's a festering wound? It's a pustule-ridden lesion that may be burst by Scourge Strike, dealing shadow damage and generating runic power. So a big source of your runic power generation is going to come from this, all right? Ugh, gross. So we have a couple of questions here that are obvious, uh, obvious ones, which is one, how many stacks of festering wound can one target take? Can we spread them around if we want to set up something pretty crazy, right? Let's assume we've still got six runes. So can we do like three festering strikes and get nine festering wounds if we're lucky? Or is it up to six? I would imagine it goes up to six, which means if you chain two back to back, you kind of capture your festering wounds in good odds because it's one to three. Okay. Then we're going to turn over to Scourge Strike, which pops one festering wound. It doesn't pop anymore. Maybe that'll come talents or whatever. It'll detonate all of them or whatever it might be. But Scourge Strike costs one rune, does damage, and pops the festering wound. And then gives you runic power back. Okay, so it gives you runic power back because you popped the festering wound. So you can start to get the idea of a rotation now. The next big change, because Death Coil still exists, by the way, is Dark Transformation. Now, some people are QQing about this because it now has no cost and it's a one-minute cooldown. And you turn into Big Timmy, or you turn Timmy into Big Timmy for 20 seconds. All they've done here is reversed how you control this. Previously, we would have controlled the end of Dark Transformation. We would have tracked the end of Dark Transformation and pooled our runic power in order to get Timmy transformed as quickly as possible as soon as it ran out. Now, Death Coil actually grants Timmy 10 energy. So what we're going to do now is pool our, uh, pool our runic power and then get ready for a big dark transformation. Pop him into Mega Timmy mode where he goes attacking and then use the Death Coils while he's transformed for 20 seconds in order to make sure he does more damage while he's transformed. That's the idea they're going with there, okay? Uh, I want to mention here Death and Decay. <coughs> Death and Decay... Works the same as Death and Decay for blood in this scenario. Which, anything inside the Death and Decay, when you Scourge Strike it, and start popping all these festering wounds, gross, uh, will also, like, hit all the targets, okay? So while you remain within the targeted Death and Decay area, your Scourge Strike will hit all nearby enemies. When those tanks move your fucking mobs outside of Death and Decay, I just hope you DKs out there lose your goddamn minds. Like, do you realize how much damage you're costing me right now? You fucking dipshit. I actually really don't like this. I really do not like this. Because it can only be annoying. There are ti I'm a tank. Occasionally, I have to move. I just have to. I have to get on with things. I see your death and decay on the floor, and I'm like, I'm sorry, bro. And now it's just got so much worse. So, so much worse. Why in God's name they would tie your main AoE to being in one specific place is ludicrous beyond belief. I just cannot understand why they've made this choice. I wouldn't even mind if Death and Decay was now a self-buff that radiated around you. That would be so much better. So, so much better than what it is right now. The talent they've shown us is at will, at all will serve. So Ray De Ray's dead now has no cooldown. It spawns two Timmy bros to come along with you and be friends. So a general playstyle is going to look something like this, I think. Is keep virulent plague up. It's the only dot that we have to apply and maintain these days, okay? So it's a six second cooldown from Outbreak, but it lasts... Uh, I believe it's 21 seconds. So that's the only thing we're going to want to maintain is Virulent Plague on the target. We're going to Festering Strike to generate Festering Wound Stacks. And then we're going to Scourge Strike to pop those wounds. That's how, And then get our Runic Power back. That's how it's going to work. Now, on the side of this, I'm not sure how it's going to weave into the top level. But we'll have two sides of the gameplay for Unholy as we always have. One is our normal damage from our character. And then looking after Timmy. So we're going to have to look after that Dark Transformation when Runic is plentiful. So we'll build our Runic Bar, then we'll pop Dark Transformation. And during that, we'll be Death Coiling while still managing our other abilities in order to boost Big, big Timmy's damage. That's generally looking how Unholy is going to play. Which means it has lots to monitor, lots to track, and lots of cool stuff going on. And I am really looking forward to playing this. This is all kinds of things that are up my street. Little things to manage that make all the difference in the fucking world. Bring it on, Blizz. I am down for it. I am really down for it. Let me know what you guys think down below. Is it too much change or... Hell, just say whatever you think. All right. Bye-bye, guys.